nor is it relevant for determination of whether a representative of this state has committed a serious violation of international humanitarian law during the exercise of the state's right to self-defense. Accordingly, the trial chamber did not err in applying the laws or customs of war in the present case. This, the second ground of appeal, is dismissed in its entirety. In his fifth ground of appeal, Mr. Takulowski contends that the trial chamber improperly <coughs> rejected the testimony of entire categories of witnesses while it later selectively relied upon this testimony. The appeals chamber observes that the trial chamber took a careful approach to the evaluation of the evidence provided by these categories of witnesses. Mr. Takulowski has not demonstrated any error in the trial chamber's acceptance of certain parts of their testimony and its rejection of other parts. And consequently, this, the fifth ground of appeal, is dismissed. Under parts of his third, fourth, and fifth ground of appeal, Mr. Takulowski submits that the trial chamber erred when it held that to incur criminal liability for acts prohibited under Common Article 3, it must merely be established that the victims for the alleged violation were not taking an active part in the hostilities when the crime was committed. He argues that the prosecution must also show that the perpetrator was aware or should have been aware of this protected status of the victim. In light of the principle of individual guilt, the appeals chamber is satisfied that it must be proven that the perpetrator of a common Article 3 crime knew or should have been aware that the victim was taking no active part in the hostilities when the crime was committed. Although there are no explicit findings in this regard in the trial judgment, when that judgment is read as a whole, it is clear that the trial chamber examined whether the direct perpetrators knew or should have been aware of the protected status of the victims in relation to each crime. This argument is therefore dismissed. In his fourth ground of appeal, Mr. Takulowski contends that the evidence was insufficient to find that murder, wanton destruction, and cruel treatment were established beyond reasonable doubt. The appeals chamber is satisfied, however, that the trial chamber identified the perpetrators of the three charged murders as men belonging to the police group led by Johan Takulowski. The evidence was also sufficient to establish beyond reasonable doubt the circumstances of the killing of each victim and the circumstances of the cruel treatment, as well as the status of the victims and the mens rea of the perpetrators thereon. Mr. Takulowski has failed to show that the trial chamber's findings in these respects were erroneous. 
Regarding the wanton destruction of 12 houses, Johan Takulowski has not shown any error in the trial chamber's findings that none of the houses caught fire accidentally or through the shelling by the Firearm Army or the NLA. That it was the police who started the fire and that none of the houses were used for military purposes when they were set on fire. This ground of appeal is dismissed. In his third ground of appeal, he submits that the trial chamber erred in its application of the modes of liability of planning, instigating, and ordering under Article 7.1 of the statute. In relation to planning, the contention is that the trial chamber erred in concluding that the predominant object of the police operation in Luboten on the 12th of August 2001 was to indiscriminately attack ethnic Albanians and their property. He claims that the evidence shows that the police operation was to eradicate NLA members who were described as terrorists from Joboten. He also maintains that it could have been the firearm president or high officials of the Ministry of Interior who planned it. The appeals chamber finds no error in the trial chamber's findings that the predominant object of the operation was to indiscriminately attack Albanian villagers and property. That Johan Takulowski had the necessary intent and that he was involved in the planning of the operation. The possible involvement of other persons in the planning of the operation does not impact on the trial chamber's finding that Johan Takulowski was criminally responsible for planning the attack. With regard to instigating and ordering, Johan Takulowski contends that the trial chamber erred in convicting him under these modes of liability, as there was no evidence suggesting that he had prompted or instructed any other person to commit a crime. In respect of ordering, he also maintains that there was no evidence showing that he had de jure or de facto authority to order killings, burnings, or beatings. And moreover, he submits that the trial chamber erred in finding that he had the mens rea to order that specific crimes be committed, although it could not determine who ordered the operation. The appeals chamber finds no error in the trial chamber's finding that Johan Takulowski prompted and instructed police members to commit the crimes at issue and that he had a position of authority to compel them to commit the crimes. The fact that he was ordered to lead the operation does not exonerate him from criminal responsibility if in the execution of the order he in turn instructed other persons to commit a crime. Accordingly, this ground of appeal is dismissed. Mr. Takulowski's sixth ground of appeal concerns his statements to a commission established by the Ministry of Interior to investigate what had occurred in Luboten. He maintains that the admission of these out-of-court statements was not in conformity with Rule 89 of the Tribunal Rules of Procedure and Evidence and the general principles of law. He also averts that since the trial chamber considered that the statements were reliable in admitting them into evidence, it should have given credence to the statements in his favor. 
appeals chamber considers that the trial chamber was entitled to admit, pursuant to Rule 89, 